Hi, welcome to the February weather trend forecast. This was a view outside my window on Friday the 4th. It's finally snowing in Berkhamsted, 25 miles northwest of central London. In fact, as you can see there, it came down quite heavy for a time and it started to accumulate. It didn't last long though, the sun returned and the snow quickly melted away. In big contrast to these pictures, which were sent to me by a friend who lives just north of Albuquerque in New Mexico, they were taken on Thursday the 3rd of February, I believe. To be fair, the elevation is about 5,000 feet above sea level, but the location is a lot further south than the UK. Will we see anything like these pictures as we head through February? I'm going to begin by taking a quick look at the first week. The animation runs from uh, Friday the 4th of February, 18 GMT. As I've already mentioned, it's quite a cold picture at the moment. We've got some wintry showers there in the north and the west, mostly dry in southern and eastern counties. Through the coming days, it's quite a mixed picture. There's some rain at times, milder air, colder air, mostly in the north. But then, through the first half of next week, so Tuesday the 8th, Wednesday the 9th onwards, it looks as though colder air is going to be sinking southwards again. At this point, 15 GMT on the 8th, there's a weather front over north of the UK, and that then steadily sinks southwards, and colder air moves down behind it from the north, white shading showing the possibility of some wintry showers. By the end of the animation, on Saturday the 12th, high pressure is building in from the southwest, quite chilly at this point, but becoming mostly dry with the wintry showers confined to eastern coastal counties. Quite a mix through the first week if this computer model run is correct. I think it's worth mentioning rainfall totals. The general pattern which is being expected is similar to the one we've seen for several weeks now. Driest in the south and the east, wettest in the north and the west. Having said that, I think it's worth noting again that rainfall amounts in the south and the east look like being somewhat higher than they have been through recent times. The aggregates here are generated from the ECM model and in eastern and southern Britain totals are around 5 to 15 millimetres. In a number of uh, recent weeks, they've been hovering around zero or one or two, but very low numbers. So it does look as though the Atlantic influence that's been affecting the northwest will, through this first week, be extending further southwards and eastwards than has often been the case. In terms of temperatures, brought up the chart here for Newcastle. It's generated using data from the UK Met Office MoGreps model. Quite a mixed picture, chilly to start off with. Then it turns milder, and then towards the end, colder once again. Similar pattern here on the equivalent chart for London. A chilly start, but then temperatures back into double figures. Signs of them dropping away once again around the 9th, the 10th, the 11th, as that colder air, which was on the animation, moves southwards. Another thing to uh, pay notice to through this work, first week is a possibility of it being windy at times with the high pressure to the southwest, low pressure to the north. The isobars across the UK are quite closely packed together on a number of days. The chart here for Glasgow just illustrates that again generated with MoGreps data. Wind gusts of 50 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour on some days. But they will be varying of course with quieter periods, calmer periods and windier ones but all in all Quite a blustery first week, I would suggest, especially in the northern half of the UK. So, what about the second week of the month as we head into middle February? Often associated with cold weather around the Valentine's Day uh, period. Well, I'll take a look at the ensemble data to try and pin down the trends and the probabilities. Starting with a 16-day GEFS plot for London. Across the top, upper air temperatures. They show quite a chilly start. The thick black line, the 30-year average, is here. And most of the individual runs, including the ensemble mean, so 
the one which is generated by averaging them all out, is below it. But going forward, the ensemble mean fit purple line, it picks up, recovers to a 30 year average, and there's a big spread later on in that period. Some runs bring in colder air, some bring in milder air. All in all, it's quite a mixed picture, but I would say describe it as being around average after that rather chilly uh, beginning. In terms of rainfall across the bottom here, spikes appear and through, throughout the second week, not a huge number of them. So once more, it doesn't, it doesn't look like a particularly wet picture in the south, but I think there will be some rain around. Will there be any snow? Snow row, it reaches 10 there at the very beginning of the second week. That's when the, there is the colder air, which moves down uh, from the north. Wouldn't be that surprised if there were a few wintry showers in southern England at that point. Whether or not they would make it to the London area, though, is, is a different question. 10 out of 30, uh, 33 maximum here suggests that the chance of it happening is quite low, perhaps around 30%, then the snow row, snow row values fall going further forwards. Looking at the two metre temperatures for London through the second week, mostly light greens. Those are runs going for forecast maximums between six and 10 Celsius. It's quite a lot of dark green to start off with. Uh, runs forecasting maximums between one and five Celsius. But the, the trend there through that second week is for milder conditions to be returning. Probably at this time of year, even if we're getting north, a northwesterly airstream pushing down across the southern part of the United Kingdom, maximum temperatures during the days will be starting to rise a little bit more than they would have done a few weeks ago with the longer days which are now returning. And I think the amount of light green in these columns is really indicative of that rather than the rather than there being a trend towards warmer upper level air in comparison to two or three weeks ago. It's probably more to do, as I say, with the, uh, the longer days, more sunlight, uh, which results in higher temperatures close to the ground level. Taking a look at the picture in Glasgow, uh, the air temperature profile across the top there, again, it's slightly below the 30 hour average to begin with. It then, climbs, but really it stays close to or just slightly below that 30 year norm through the rest of the period. The rainfall though across the bottom is quite different to the London plot. More spikes here suggesting quite a wet picture. The chance of snow, well the snow row values there are higher ranging from 5 to 17 at the very end suggesting once more that temperatures in the north will be lower than in the south in general terms. And here the two metre temperature data table for Glasgow is. There is more dark green showing in these columns. In fact, it makes up the majority uh, for most of the days through that second week. Nonetheless, there's still a significant amount of light green, so not particularly cold. I think it's just suggesting that there's a greater chance of colder air pushing down from the north at times through this second week and it probably struggles to reach southern England and as I say even if it does make it to the south the lengthening days mean that temperatures at the ground level will be a little bit higher now. The ensemble mean showing surface pressure generated using the ECM data for Monday the 14th of February so Valentine's Day well the signal here is for high pressure to be having quite a lot of influence just across the north there where it looks like there's a more vigorous Atlantic flow remaining in place. Positive North Atlantic oscillation, that general theme has been consistent in, in recent updates from all of the major computer models. It's pointing towards any colder incursions being relatively short-lived and once again, just emphasizing that they will mostly be affecting the north of the UK. Well, the first half of the month is looking quite mixed, but what about the second? At this range, it's simply about trying to identify the general direction of travel. And what I mean by that is, will it be colder or warmer than average, drier or wetter? 
To start with, I'll take a look at the GEFS pressure anomaly plot for the week beginning Thursday the 17th. The yellows are indicating the positive anomaly, so higher than average pressure, and the blues a negative one. I think what this is pointing towards is the likelihood of an Atlantic flow across the UK, but somewhat weaker than the norm with pressure building more strongly from the southwest. Therefore, rain amounts, particularly in the south, probably lower than the average. Jumping forwards to the week beginning Thursday the 24th, the positive anomaly now has built northwards across all regions. Again, it's pointing towards the likelihood of high pressure having quite a lot of influence, particularly across the southern half of the UK. Looking at the air mass anomaly charts, air mass temperature anomaly charts for week beginning the 17th, the pinky red down here is showing a slightly positive one, and the blues in the northwest slightly negative. All in all, though, very close to the 30 year average. Jumping forwards to Thursday the 24th, and now there is a weak positive anomaly over all of the UK. It's about one or two, maybe two Celsius at the top. That's as the high pressure has a lot of influence. And I think it's pointing towards relatively warm air, as you would expect, being trapped underneath it. Two meter temperature profile for London. The reds are indicating the mean minimums and maximums from all of the runs in the GEFS. They are staying above that thick black line, the 30 year norm through much of the second half of February and into early March as it happens there. It's indicating above average temperatures, milder than the 30 year norm. Looking at the comparable chart for Glasgow, little different because the reds are intertwining with that black line, pointing towards temperatures being closer to where they should be in late February. Again, it's, it's offering support for the idea of colder incursions being more likely in the northern half of the UK than in the south. So to summarize the month, week one, it's a cold start with wintry showers in the north and west. Then it turns changeable and that generally mixed pattern continues for much of a period, becomes milder at times, especially in the south. Wettest in the north, but there is likely to be some rain in all areas. Towards the end of the week, it begins to turn colder again, particularly in the north. Week two, a chilly start is likely, and there could be some wintry showers in the northern half of the UK, and maybe in eastern coastal counties. It then becomes quite settled as high pressure builds in from the southwest. Temperatures trending close to the average, so after that rather chilly start, they begin to recover. The risk of frost decreases later in the week, and probably starts to turn more changeable again as the high pressure slips away southeastwards. Second half of the month, confidence of course extremely low by then, but the, uh, the indications from the ensemble models at this stage are for it to be wettest in the north. There could be some colder incursions there at times and that leads to the possibility of some snow. Quite dry in the south with pressure being higher than the average through much of a period and often rather mild in the south to go with it. Just the possibility there with that mild high pressure dominated scenario that we could see some notably high temperatures towards the end of the month. It could feel quite spring-like in the southern half of the UK on some days. That's just based on the current model data though, and of course things can change very, very quickly. Well, there we have it. My expectation is that February will finish with temperatures above the 30 year average and rainfall amounts 
below it in the southern half of the UK at least. Probably a different story up in the north and especially the northwest. Some colder incursions are quite likely. On the whole, though, probably short lived and nothing particularly notable. I don't think most of us are going to be seeing scenes like those ones from New Mexico that I showed in the video. The exception could be those of you who live high up in the Scottish mountains. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. As ever, please do remember to hit the like and subscribe buttons below. Thank you for watching now. Bye.